Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're gonna have a little yap session about some of the news that have been coming out of Barcelona over the past couple days. And I mostly wanna talk about Xavi and Lewandowski. If you're an avid watcher of the Meech No Ball YouTube channel for a long time now, you know that those are two fan favorites on this channel. Xavi and Lewandowski, they're probably the two Barca figures that I've criticized the most over the past couple months, or especially this season, because I think both of them have been subpar. Lewandowski is a player and Xavi is a manager. And over the past couple of days, some reports have come out that Xavi apparently, Joana Porta, is trying to convince him to stay for one more year. And Lewandowski apparently got an offer from a side league club and he might be considering it, but Barca wanted to stay as well for one more year. So then we're going to touch on both of those things. I'm mostly going to focus on Xavi because that to me is the most important piece of news. And then we're going to touch Lewandowski slightly, not touch Lewandowski. We're not, that sounded fucking terrible. We're going to touch on the Lewandowski news slightly. That sounds better. I don't want to touch Lewandowski anywhere but anyway moving on past that so I want to talk about that but again mostly focusing on Xavi and talking about Lewa briefly at the end uh starting off with Xavi I knew that this was going to happen because I know how much Joan Laporta loves Xavi I know that Joan Laporta was not going to let Xavi go easy I'm leaving at the end of the year and Joan Laporta was just, just going to be like yeah you're leaving you're good to go because again like I said these guys love each other bro they've been they've been friends or like they've, they've known each other for over 20 years Joan Laporta was obviously the president while Xavi was a player coming up. And Joan Laporta is now the president who obviously signed Xavi as the manager. So they have a very good relationship. They're very tight, obviously. And I knew that he wasn't going to let him go that easy. But to me, Joan Laporta is in the wrong here. Xavi wants to do what you got. You got to let Xavi do what he wants to do. And Xavi has made it clear that he wants to leave. I'm not saying this because I want Xavi to leave. Again, I do think Xavi should be leaving at the end of the year, but Xavi has told you himself that he wants to leave and he looks worn out and it looks like the job is taking a toll on him. And I think it's best for Xavi if he takes a year off and he comes back rejuvenated to another team once he obviously gets some rest and he starts like getting his love for the game back because Xavi looks like he's lost his love for the game managing Barca. And by the way, that's happened to a lot of managers. Luis Enrique and Pep Guardiola, I think they both took a one year off before coaching again after leaving Barcelona. Because Barcelona is a very difficult job. I actually think Luis Enrique took more years off. I think he took like two years off actually after coaching Barca. It takes a toll on you to be the Barca manager. It is not easy, bro. And despite the fact that we've had a couple good games over the past two, like our past two games have been decent against Napoli in the UCL time 1-1, but I think we controlled most of that game. I think Xavi tactically had was actually pretty decent in that game. And against Setafe last weekend, this weekend, sorry, the one that we played on Saturday where we beat them 4-0 and had one of our best games in five months. That shouldn't deter us from the fact that Xavi, I don't think, is the right man for the job. And we need something different. This team needs a change next year. And we need to be looking at new managers to change the culture in this team and get us back to being a team that can compete for the league and the UCL. Because let's be honest, bro, everybody's talking about, like, what if Xavi wins the UCL? What if Xavi wins this? What's, what, what are the odds of that happening? You know what I mean? What are the odds of Xavi winning the UCL? If Xavi wins the UCL, we'll see what, in which way he wins the UCL. If he's beating every team 4 or 5 nil, we're, we're cruising to the final in Wembley, and we're beating Man City or Inter or Real Madrid in Wembley 2 or 3 nil. then you know what, Xavi can say, and I'll eat my words. I'll fucking eat it, okay? I will eat it. I'll be like, I was wrong about Xavi, and I have no problem admitting that because, again, I love Xavi, one of my favorite players of all time, and he's obviously the Barca manager. So if Xavi does that, that'd be great. But let's be realistic here. How many of us see that coming? Not many of us, right? Because Xavi has proven that he's not really that type of manager or, or that caliber of manager. So for me, Joan Laporta just has to let him go. And again, this is not a hit piece on Xavi because I don't, like people think I'm a toxic Barca fan because I criticize Xavi. I just give my opinion, bro. Like I would, I, I'm treating Xavi the same way that I would treat any manager. I don't care that he was a Barca legend. It does not matter to me. If Xavi was Joe Schmo off the street and he never wore a Barca shirt in his life, I would say, and he was giving us the results that Xavi was giving us, I would say, let him go. Because it has nothing to do with the actual person. It just has to do with the fact that he's not a great manager, in my opinion. So, again, not a hit piece on Xavi, but Xavi needs to go, and Xavi wants to go. Xavi's not getting fired. Like, it's not like the club came out and said, Xavi, we're letting him go at the end of the year. Xavi literally announced, I am not going to be coaching this team next year because I need a break. He needs a break, bro. So, let him go. I don't see why Joana Porta is so infatuated with trying to, trying to make him stay. Because, again, I know that he loves him and they're friends and whatever, but it's time for him to find something new. It's time for Xavi to go out and find something new. And who knows, maybe in a couple years, he goes out to another team. He play, he, 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 he has some good like seasons with them. They play some good football. And then maybe he can come back and coach Barcelona later on in the future. But for right now, Barcelona need a new voice. And for us to sit here and be so enamored with trying to bring Xavi back, it really makes no sense to me. And making up all these hypotheticals about what if Xavi wins the UCL? What if Xavi wins La Liga and the UCL? What if Barcelona get unknocked out of the Copa Rey and then Xavi comes back and wins the Copa Rey in a scenario that obviously is impossible to happen? We can't just keep making up all these fantasy scenarios to justify Xavi having to stay at the end of the year. Because again, those are not likely to happen. We're making a comeback in La Liga, but Real Madrid are so far and away the favorites. We're, we looked good against Napoli in the UCL run of 16, but we still drew that game 1-1 and we 
still got to get past Napoli. And Victor Rossman today, I think he scored like three goals. He's on form, and we got to watch out because Napoli, with their new manager, seems to be playing a lot better. So first of all, let's get past the round of 16, and then we could talk about getting past the quarterfinals, and then we could talk about getting past the semifinals, and then if we ever get to Wembley, we could talk about winning the whole thing and Xavi staying. But this whole, like this making up hypothetical scenarios about Xavi, he might stay, he might go, he might stay if he wins the UCL. Again, the probabilities, the probabilities of that happening are low. So for me, my take on the situation is Xavi, if he wants to go, let him go. And I think he should go. I think Barca need a new manager, they need a new voice in, the, in June and July to get him obviously pre prepare for the season in August. Because I think this team has a lot of potential. And I don't think that a couple good, a couple good games against Hitafe and a draw against Napoli, which we played well, but still we drew, should be the differentiator in Xavi staying or leaving next year. And that shouldn't be the case because the bad performances this year far outweigh the good performances. Hitafe was really, in my opinion, our fourth good game of this year. It goes Antwerp, Betis, Atletico Madrid at home, and then probably Hitafe. Those have been our good games this year. And I made a whole tier list on Barca games, by the way. If you guys want to go check that out, it's on my page. I ranked every Barca game this year so far. And I could only, I could only put four in, in, in great. Because this year has not been good whatsoever. So Xavi and Joana Porta, he needs to let it go, bro. Joana Porta should be focusing in on bringing in a new manager, scouting new managers, and talking to Hansi Flick, talking to Jurgen Klopp, trying to get him to come out of retirement after he leaves Liverpool, talking to Julian Nagels, man, talking to all these different managers, not talking to Xavi to see if he can come back. So that's my take on Xavi. Let him go. We need a new guy. And Joana Porta, stop being such a fucking kiss ass and just let the man do what he wants to do. He wants to go rest. And, you know, Xavi has a fuckload of money. He wants to go be with his family and do whatever he wants to do and then come back to football in a couple years. That's fine. But for next year, just respect the man's wishes and stop trying to be so, like, stop trying to convince him to come back. So that's on Xavi. On Lewandowski, I want to spend like a minute or two on this one. Lewandowski, apparently, he got an offer from, from a Saudi League club and Barcelona wanted to stay one more year. Again, similar to Xavi, we shouldn't be changing our opinion on Lewandowski over the past month or three three or four games that he's been decent. Lewandowski has been scoring goals over the past couple games. He's been really, really good. Uh, he's been arguably our best, not arguably, but our arguably our best player, sorry, but he's been a really good player for us. Again, scoring goals, that's his job. His job is scoring goals, which he wasn't doing at the beginning of the season. But Robert Lewandowski to me is now a Saudi league level player. And people are going to be like, oh my God, bro, you're fucking crazy. He has like five, he has the most goals. And I think he's second for most goals in Europe's top five leagues since 2024, like since the turn of the calendar. That's great. But if you watch Robert Lewandowski play, you know, you know that a lot of times this Barca attack grinds to a halt because of him. And I feel like this Barca team would be a lot more effective if Victor Roque got a lot more playing time because Lewandowski, he's, he's just not that same guy anymore, bro. So if I was, if it was, up, if it was up to me, and some Saudi league club came out and said, we'll give you 10, 15 million for Lewandowski. Take it and run. Take that 50 million for Lewandowski and let him go to Saudi, let him go to the Saudi league. Let him go to the Saudi league, sorry. This man, if he wins, maybe if he win, I don't know, maybe if we win the UCL this year, he would want to go out on a high note. He can leave after being a European champion once again. But I don't, like again, I don't see us winning many trophies this year, if any. So I think Lewandowski would be better off if he just, you know, took the money. If we took the money for Lewa, let him go and let him finish his career in Saudi Arabia. Because again, like I said, to me, he's a Saudi Arabia or a Saudi League type of player right now. He's just not good enough for Barcelona. Again, the, like let's the like the the uh, the what is it called? The exception is not the rule. That's what I, I wanted to say. The exception is not the rule. His last few games have been good. That is not what Lewandowski has been this whole year. And let's wait and see how he performs towards the end of the season. We got our most important games coming up at the end of the year right now. Like these are the most important months of the year. March, April, May. Let's see how he performs in these, in these games. And then seeing, and based on that, we can make a judgment on whether he should come back or, or leave next year. But to me, again, I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm ungrateful for Lewa because he's been good the past couple games. He's been scoring goals. But... He hasn't been great basically throughout his whole tenure at Barcelona. But despite like he's been like first half of the season last year, Lewa was great, and then post World Cup he was not great, and then first half of the season this year he was not good, and then he's been good for the past month or something. But the, like that's an anomaly. What he's been doing now is an anomaly compared to what he's been doing throughout this whole season. So again, let's wait till May, let's wait till March, let's wait till April and see what he does, and then we can make a judgment on him. But I just want to get that very clear right now. I don't want us to make the exception the rule with neither Lewandowski nor Xavi. Two good games from Xavi does not mean that he should be staying next year. And three or four good games from Lewandowski where he's scoring goals does not mean he should not be sold or he should be our number nine the first game of the season next year. Because we got to think, we got to think, like, we, we got to, like, just pump the brakes, okay? That's all I got to say. We got to pump the brakes and see how the season plays out. And then we can make a judgment going into next year. But yeah, that's my take. I hope you guys enjoy the video. I love every single one of you. Let me know what you guys think about Xavi and Lewandowski in the comment section. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.